Hi and welcome to my first Benda video tutorial. In this uh, tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up um, a, a car mesh uh, working environment. Um, there are several ways to do this and uh, one of the traditional ones are to to use a four view perspective as we have in this example here. Four views and uh, you have a top view and a front view for example and uh, if you want a perspective view, uh, this setup is set up by background images, but um, there are some good and bad things about that. I'm going to show you another way of, of doing this setup, so you have everything in one window instead of having these four. So let's try to open one of these files here, I've made already. And this setup is made by planes. If we go into Shaded mode, you can see the planes better. You can also choose them to, to see the highlights. <coughs> so actually, they are just one, two, three, four planes, uh, all with images on, and the images you can see if you go to textured mode. Um, the, the setup of this uh, of these blueprints, uh, I'm not going to talk about this in um, in this tutorial, but I'm going to talk about it in the next one. Uh, the problem we have when using this technique is that when you want to start building the car there are going to be difficulties uh, seeing through the object and let me demonstrate this so if we try to add a plane and we let's, <coughs> let's move the plane a bit this way and a bit up so we can see it and maybe also scale it like this okay let's move it a bit more like this. As you can see we cannot see through the plane which means that if we go to uh, sub view for example we can see what's going on on the blueprint. Side view is okay but if you start to look in perspective view then it's gonna be hard to. So how do we avoid this? Well we do it by UV unwrapping uh, our, our mesh that we're working with. And this is actually pretty fast and pretty simple. So what we do, the first thing is, we make sure that we have only the plane selected. We can see this by going to shaded mode for example. And we can see this is the only one which is selected. Also you can click the A key which deselects everything and then you can right click on the plane to select it. Then you go to your, <coughs> to your shading tab and your material tab. And you add a new, um, a new material. Let's move this up a bit like this. Let's make these a bit bigger. Okay. Uh, let's rename this as car. And let's go to this tab up here, editing. You can also click F9. And as you can see, we have two tabs here. We are missing the third tab, which we are going to use in this example. So what we do is we, for example, we could uh, split up this window. We could make this a uh, UV, uh, let's see where is it, uh, UV image editor. We go into edit mode by having our mouse over here and clicking tab. And we click U to unwrap um, our mesh. And the mesh is now unwrapped and we can just close this. Or we can join the arrows like this. Okay. If we go back to textured mode we can see nothing has happened yet. We can still see it, but what we can see is it, if we look back here again in the editing under the editing panel, we can choose. Uh, we can now choose textured face. We couldn't choose this before. We only had two tabs. Now we have three. So what you do is you choose invisible, and now you can see through uh, your plane. Let's minimize this. Okay. And when you start modeling, if you, for example, choose this line, you have this edge here, and you extrude it, uh, for example, along the y-axis, uh, we can still see, we can still see through our mesh. So we can start modeling, so on, so on. So this is uh, my way of of uh, making a setup. What I can also recommend is that these lines can be can be. Uh, pretty tough to see sometimes because there are so many lines on the blueprint and uh, the li these lines get kind of transparent or invisible 
together with all the other lines. So what you could do is you could go up here, make sure your mouse cursor changes to this and drag it. Go to themes, choose add, and choose uh, make sure you have 3D view selected and choose here from this menu and then choose object active. Here you can see the color which is what it has currently and we can change it to black. Back in edit mode, uh, back in uh, object mode, we can see that now it has these big fat um, lines instead, which makes it much easier. If we go back to edit mode by clicking tab, uh, and selecting everything by clicking two times on A, we can see these lines also need to some fixing. So let's go back to edge selected, and you can see it's a green color. We could make it also black or another color, which is easy to see. We might also want to change this called active. Uh, what it does is, for example, if we have chosen one edge here, it becomes white, but we it gets pretty hard to see again. So we also change this, for example, to black or totally another color. So what happens is that when we choose this edge again, this edge here, um, it's uh, black. You could also make it another color so you can see which edge was actually selected. Uh, the last thing I want to do is I want to go into vertex mode and um, go here to vertex, change this to black color also, and we want to change our vertex size to six instead of two, so so uh, the vertex becomes much bigger. And that's about it. You can see. Let's uh, minimize this again. You can see when we go to our side view, it's much easier to see our plane now, front view, top view, and so on. And at the same time, we can see through our mesh, which was the whole purpose. Also, what, uh, is, is what I prefer about this technique, um, using planes instead of background images, which is normally used, is that you can clearly go from one perspective to another one just by clicking 1, 3, 7 for top, or whatever you want. It's very fast to navigate. So this is my workflow of uh, building, for example, a car uh, after blueprints in Blender 248.